wee tip on brake building. Hey people, how are you doing out there? And thank you very much for joining me back here at the Snooker Shed. A massive big thanks to all the people that like and subscribe and comment on these videos that I'm doing. It's amazing to know that you guys are out there watching and enjoying the nonsense that I put over on YouTube. So what are we doing today here at the Snooker Shed? Well, I'm gonna give you some tips that I think just might help you with your brake building. So you're fairly confident round about the black spot. You can pot short to medium range red balls and get reasonable position on the black and you're happy on the black, but you can't really seem to make consistent breaks above 16, four, five shots. So let's look at tip number one, and this is a really simple one, but really difficult to apply, and it is take your time. What is the rush? When we play a game of snooker, you find people running around the table going a lot quicker than most professionals. And if the professionals are taking their time, then maybe it's telling us something. And that goes across the board. When you prepare yourself for a shot, make sure you've given yourself enough time to look at what's going to happen. If you don't, yeah, you might pot that ball, but you'll find yourself out of position soon enough and missing. So tip number one, let's take our time when we play this game. Hi, I'm Gary and I'm from Devon and I'll see you on the table. Okay, let's look at tip number two. And tip number two is look at the table. See what it's saying. And this is part of taking your time. So when you look at the table like this one, you can see the balls are fairly spread. And you'd be thinking, yeah, there's a good chance I can get a winning break or a substantial break out of the positions the balls are in. But before you start playing, I always have a look around. Just a glance. You're looking, does the pink pass into the bottom pockets? Does it pass into the middle? Does the black clear on both its own pockets? Is there any reds in the way of the pink or the black? And if there is, well... What could I do to move that red? What other positional red could I get on to knock it out of the way? Could I knock that one away from that position with the black or with the pink? And there's so many questions the table is asking us and just taking time to map it out and look at all those wee ideas that you might have just before you start your break is really helpful to answer those questions as the break goes along. So tip number two, look at the table. See what it's saying. And tip number three, get yourself on the snooker shed door, just like Flynn from Bolton at 246 miles away. Then we're going to fly away across the other side of the world and meet Jesusa and Isabella, the Philippines, 6,466 miles away. Just around the corner from him though, we've got Harith, Who's living in Malaysia at 6,606 miles away. Now, if you'd like to be on the door here at the Snooker Shed, just leave me a wee comment for where you come from and I'll figure out how far away you are. And do me a favour, send me an email, a picture of yourself playing snooker or wherever you are in the world so we can feature your lovely face as we give you a shout out here at the Snooker Shed. Now we're going to look at tip number four. And tip number four is playing those three shots ahead. Plan out what you're going to do. Yes, I'm looking at the table. There's lots of balls. They're all scattered. Could be a bit daunting. So you just get down and start playing. But funnily enough, you'll find yourself out of position and the distance will get bigger and bigger and the pots will get harder and harder until your recovery pots are too difficult for you to play and you end up missing. Okay, so let's look at how we'd think those three shots ahead. And yes, it looks ball spread out really daunting. And you're thinking, wow, how can I see some patterns on the table 
for those three shots. Well, the first two tips was the building blocks. And if you remember, taking your time and looking at the table, what was it telling us? Mapping it out. That really helps when it comes to now figuring the three shots. And for me, shot number two is always the key. Okay, let's look at the balls as they are here on the table. So we've got this relatively easy pot into the bottom bag. We're going to come up to the black. That's pretty easy. No much difficulty in doing that. The thing here is, is the key shot is getting the correct position of the cue ball onto the black. Because when I mapped out the table earlier on, I seen that this red here covered the path of the pink. So if I can get a nice natural angle so that I can take the black, put it in the same bag and canning that red out the way, leaving myself on this red, back then for the black. That's going four shots, but you can see how simple that little pattern came up. Okay, tip number five, and it's concentrate on one shot at a time. Focus on the pot. Now, I know a lot of players out there have said to me in the past that they find it difficult to think of the three shots ahead because when they go back to that first shot to play, they tend to miss the shot because they've still got a lot of that information in their head. And I always say to them, is once you've decided where the cue ball is going to go, and once you've decided where to hit the cue ball to get it there, that's all you need. The rest you can forget about. So when you stand behind the shot, you say, I'm hitting the cue ball here and at that speed, height and speed. That's all you need to think about because where the cue ball goes really doesn't matter. You've made your mind up, forget about where it's going until you strike the ball, then see if you were correct. Once you strike the ball and it does go to where you want, then that's a confirmation that your height and speed was correct. If it doesn't go where you expected it to go, then that's also a confirmation of hitting the cue ball there makes it go there. And then that also helps you judge for the next time where to get it where you wanted it to go. So there are loads and loads of learning that's coming from that focusing on the shot. I'd like to give a massive shout out to this lad, professional snooker player from Scotland, Ross Muir. Now Ross Muir is part of the Snooker Shed family now and we are sponsoring him through this season. Ross is an absolute great lad and he's came along and knocked up his own YouTube channel. Now I think this is going to be absolutely fascinating and a great insight to a professional player's daily life. Now Ross isn't going to give away all the trade secrets but I guarantee there's going to be loads of tips in there that both me and you could learn from. So I'm really excited to watch some of the stuff that Ross is coming up. Link will be down below in the description to join Ross's channel. And Ross is also looking for questions and videos that we would like to see him make. So if you've got a video or a question in mind, stick it on his channel. A good chance he's gonna make that video or answer that question. And listen. Hi there, my name is Ross Muir and I'll see you on the table.